Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Mind of Steel. This show is intended to be your weekly delve into the bizarre and strange worlds of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorists. I like to profile the, the wacky ideas of people like um, Mark Steele. He's famously the man who believes that lampposts are in fact directed energy weapons which will kill us all. Isn't that bizarre? Well, he seems to take that very seriously. But to us, those of us who are watching Mind of Steel, he is a source of incredible ridicule. He's, a, he's an absurd, preposterous figure, as is the subject of today's show. I promised last week that I would be introducing a, a brand new fluffy nonsense monger, and so I shall. Today's figure is a man so preposterous in his ability to, to represent the Dunning-Kruger effect. A, a man capable of making such bizarre and sweeping pronouncements, and yet simultaneously unaware of his limitations, unaware of his lack of learning in those very same subjects that he chooses to pronounce about, which makes him an absolutely perfect subject for this show. So, contrary to the normal custom of Mind of Steel, I'm going to allow today's guest Fluff to introduce himself. I'm Gary Waterman. I'm a former police officer. My name is Gary Waterman, a former police officer. A former police officer, a Christian. A former police officer, a recent Christian and a victim in relation to this system of fraud. I'm a former police officer. I'm a Christian. I was a police officer. For I'm also a Christian. So a Christian. And I am a recently a Christian. I'm I am a recent Christian. I'm a recent Christian. Since I've become a Christian, I'm a Christian. A Christian. Do you have a religion that you follow? Uh, yes, I'm a Christian. Now, I have been personally victimised in relation to this victim. I'm a former police officer with 18 years service, a Christian and a victim of this fraud. A Christian and a victim of police officer and a victim of this. I am a former police officer. International fraud. Christian and victim of the largest financial crime in the history of mankind. And I suspect it is the largest problem facing the planet at the moment. Gary Waterman believes that he has uncovered a financial scandal of such epically vast proportions that it makes every other scandal in history seem like chump change. So if, if you're thinking about Enron, Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme, the Parmalat scandal, or, or possibly Worldcom, all of which were vastly corrupt enterprises which defrauded their investors out of hundreds of billions of dollars of investments, well, um, they're nothing. They're, they're pathetic compared to what Gary believes that he's discovered. But the strange thing is, though, that Gary, the, 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 the only man on earth who seems to have been able to detect this, well, he doesn't have any background at all in financial investigation. Yes, he was a police officer, but he worked as a community liaison officer, and that really has nothing to do with serious fraud investigations. Gary has never worked for any kind of financial organisation. I don't think he's ever founded a business or, or got involved with any aspect of corporate or business law. So it's kind of bizarre that uh, he is the only person who seems to have discovered what is going on. You might hope that um, with such epic pronouncements, Gary would need an awful lot of very strong evidence to back up these claims. Why don't you tell us from the beginning and what kind of evidence you got? I purchased a flat within uh, a block of flats, obviously, not long after I became a director for a freehold company in relation to that block. The directorship with that freehold company led me to uncover what is irrefutably now the, probably the root cause of most of the issues that are going on in the world. And it was as Gary Waterman was working as a co-director for his block of flats freehold management company, that he had a, a realisation, a vision. He came to an understanding of what was truly going wrong with the world. If Gary Waterman wasn't a, a professed Christian, I would say that he was the reincarnation of the Buddha, because these kinds of realizations about the, the human condition occur maybe only once in a millennia. Could Gary Waterman be such an enlightened person? Please, Gary, tell us what is going wrong with the world? 
And what what are the root cause of most of the world's problems? What what is it? This system enables uh, a fraud on a international scale to be taking place. It then enables all manner of crimes to launder money through those systems, including weapons companies, oil companies, pharmaceutical com companies, vaccine companies, drugs, and child trafficking. So as we're learning, this financial scandal that Gary is speaking about involves every single kind of company committing every single kind of crime. But that discovery wasn't enough for this fearless investigator, this former police officer, recent Christian, and also former director of a management company that uh, maintained a block of flats near Bournemouth. No, Gary Waterman has stared into the rotten heart of the creaking edifice of our so-called financial system. And he has seen precisely what is going wrong with his own beady little eyes. Well, if you have forged bank documents produced by the bank, then obviously you can falsify your figures for submissions through to company's house. And then the real money actually obtained through that company could be, like you said, laundered into offshore accounts. I'm going to say it again, just in case you didn't believe your ears. You might have rushed for a, a few drops of Otex ear ointment to, uh, to dissolve away whatever waxy residue might be remnant in your ear canals, believing that uh, what you just heard could not have possibly been what you just heard. So unbelievably profound is the, the expanse and significance of Gary Waterman's claim. Because he's just revealed that the organisation that was responsible for this fraud was not, as we may have previously suspected, somebody stealing Gary Waterman's money. No, no. It was the banks themselves. It is the banks who are conducting this fraud. The banks are maintaining two sets of balances. One real, one fraudulent. Which one they give you? Well, maybe that depends on who you are. Because Gary is going to explain exactly how he came by this bizarre, frightening, significant, and maybe even deadly realization of the fraud that is abounding us at every single moment. Uh, I then uh, obtained confirmation that the forged bank documents had been uh, given to the management company by the bank itself. So I contacted the bank. I then sent this gentleman uh, an, an email with the documents uh, and explained my concerns and all the discrepancies that I told you about, the fact that I was a former police officer, um, and I never heard from them again. This interaction between Gary Waterman and Lloyds Bank Customer Services is even more bizarre than Gary Waterman may have initially given the impression. And that's because he's omitted one critical fact from this story, which is that uh, the bank account in question was not his. He was not a signatory to that bank account, even though at some time in the past he was a director of that company, and even though at some time in the past he was a former police officer, and even though he is now a recent Christian, none of those facts entitle him to uh, demand of a bank whether a particular set of statements corresponds to the actual numbers in a bank account that is not his. And that seems to be a fact that Gary finds very puzzling. He really can't seem to understand that because he has this very strong sense of entitlement that believes that um, by being a former police officer, he should be entitled to have the bank do precisely what he says, even though to do so would be a clear and obvious violation of the actual customer's data protection rights, the, the actual customer who wasn't Gary Waterman. The SWIFT International Transaction System is a fraudulent entity system, okay? Most banks use this international transaction system. It has been set up with false entity companies. Not only is the entire bookkeeping system of one of the UK's major banks entirely suspect, but 
the system for international money transfer, SWIFT, Gary has determined that this organization is rotten to its core and quixotically may not even exist. In fact, the same companies that started up my company that I'm still a shareholder for, where this all started, the very same company was used to start up the SWIFT international transaction system that all banks used. We're about to take a journey down a very deep and perplexing rabbit hole. And I'm going to warn you all, because this isn't a rabbit hole that leads somewhere interesting, like Wonderland or Oz. It's going to lead to a completely boring dead end. Perhaps the only thing you will find in the, the, the bottomless pit of this rabbit hole is a monument to Gary Waterman's ignorance and stupidity, lack of financial knowledge, and complete inexperience with the matter of registering companies. But what's going on here is he believes that there was a company called Swift Incorporations, which did the registration for both Swift, the financial transfer company, and also Exborn Manor Freeholders, the, the company of which he was briefly part of. Well, he's noticed some kind of discrepancy between uh, the company's house ledger and the initial founding certificate of, of that company that did the registration. And Gary believes that if such a discrepancy exists, then it means that wasn't a real company, and therefore everything that company did, including register all those other companies, well, they were fictional or invalid transactions. And therefore, almost every single company which can trace itself back to one of these uh, strangely registered companies is therefore some kind of legal fiction trading fraudulently and therefore committing a fraud against members of the general public. You see, it's absolutely vast. It, it's, a, it's a vast conspiracy theory that could only have been conceived of by uh, a man so truly ignorant of the way things actually work. But let's listen on. Let, let's see where this crazy flight of fancy takes uh, Gary Waterman and anyone foolish enough to listen to him. Let's go and look at this yourself. Do a company's house check on Swift UK Island Limited and you will see that they were started up with Swift Incorporations Limited, a false entity company whose names uh, on their incorporation documents have not even been registered with company's house. I, I told you we were going down a rabbit hole. This is yet another wrong thing that Gary is saying because you can actually look up Swift Incorporations Limited, and you can see that at the time of its initial incorporation, it was also called Swift Incorporations. But perhaps the source of his confusion is that Swift Incorporations was itself incorporated by yet another firm. It was called, at that time in 1985, it was called Jordan and & Sons, and a long time before that, it had another bizarre name, Hamiplak Limited. Presumably, it was an off-the-shelf corporation that uh, some lawyer bought up and then decided to rename. But Gary's confused because the name on the official company's house register doesn't correspond to this bizarre Hamiplag. It, it, it's some other name that the company had when it was actually trading. Gary believes that that inconsistency isn't just some kind of artifact of, of the fact that in 1965, when that company was first registered, Company's House wasn't computerized, and probably when they eventually became computerized in the early 1980s, they didn't bother to type in every single old record because typing in stuff with it was expensive and time consuming. But that's basically it. That's at the heart of what Gary believes is this financial fraud, this greatest scandal that is rocking the entire universe. And thus everything it does must also be invalid and fictional, including, in this case, registering other companies. And so if one of the companies that originally registered companies had this uh, strange discrepancy in their record on, at Company's House, well, doesn't that mean potentially thousands or possibly even millions of companies that we all might be trading with, buying our gas and groceries from? Well, they don't exist. And if they don't exist, then perhaps 
We are all, as Gary says, victims of fraud. Well, of course, we may be victims if the laws that were being applied were consistent with the laws as imagined by a former police officer from the Kent and later Dorset Police Force, whose highest achievement in that field of law enforcement was as a community liaison officer. But fortunately for us, that is not the universe that we inhabit. If the incorporation documents have a company on it that are false registered company, an unlawful entity, then this company also becomes unlawful. So that is Gary Waterman's conspiracy theory. It's basically the belief that if you find a very old record in company's house and there's a discrepancy in it, then the company isn't real and therefore everything that company did in its trading history didn't actually happen, including maybe registering other companies. And as a consequence, virtually every company that uh, we might buy a packet of crisps from is fictional. And therefore, if you have exchanged money for crisps, you may be a victim of the fraud that, that Gary was talking about at the very beginning of this episode. You see, we're all victims now because we've all bought groceries and uh, things from shops, shops that turned out to be entirely fictional. Truly frightening, isn't it, friends? But as with all conspiracy theories, I think there's another side to this story. Gary might be talking a, a, an exciting, fun talk. At least it was fun enough to engage almost all of the UK conspiracy theory bitch shoot and rumble world. But you only have to listen to what Gary's really saying to find out what Gary's message is actually about. This is just pretty standard conspiracy stuff. Every conspiracy theory grifter has to have, you know, their thing. And with Gary, his thing is, I'm a Christian, I'm a former police officer, I'm a victim of fraud. Oh, and look at Company's House. But what it's really about is this. By the way, I'm stopping all of my taxes. I'm going to stop paying my taxes. Stop paying tax. I cannot pay tax into a criminal system. Sh refusing to pay tax. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not paying any tax. To stop paying tax. And refusing to pay tax to compel a change. And I've been saying to a lot of Christians, look, stop paying your taxes. So basically, Gary Waterman's grift is the same as every other conspiracy grift. And any of you guessed that, that behind this ridiculous talk, that the man currently living in a van was actually just doing it because he wanted to provide a justification for his life as a tax evader. Well, thank you very much, Gary. I can assure you that uh, Gary has now been added to our roster of nutty, flurfy zanies. And you know what? I'm going to be doing some more content about Gary Waterman because his lack of self-awareness puts him into the same nutty spectrum as some of our favourites, people like Mark Steele and, and Sabrina Wallace, who justify the most ridiculous things in, in perplexingly bizarre ways. People who are the living embodiments of the Dunning-Kruger effect because they know so little about the subject that they talk about, and yet they do so at every available opportunity. So Gary, thank you for your time. Thank you for being such a prolific producer of ridiculous videos. You will be sure to be featured yet again on Mind of Steel. And I look forward to seeing you all in one week's time because it's a whole nutty world out there and I can only bite off so much in one week.